Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the weird way Kate Middleton has been making Meghan Markle's style. Let's get to it. There have been Sussex stands and Sussex squatties who have made note of the way that Kate's fashion has changed since Meghan came on the scene. More specifically, since Meghan has left um, being a senior working royal. Now, anyone who knows how to use Google can tell a very distinct difference between the way Kate dresses now and the way she dressed before. Now before, Kate will almost always copy Diana, on occasion copy the Queen. I mean, even wearing very similar styles and dresses to her own mother. The only style elements that was uniquely Kate's was her the, wearing the coat dresses and all of the dresses with lots and lots of buttons. But beyond that, most of her style has been emulating other women, other older women. When Megan came onto the scene, Megan was bashed for wearing, well, just about everything. They had a problem with her wearing black nail polish, off-shoulder dress, and they had a problem with her frosting her legs. They had a problem with her wearing pantsuits. They had a problem with her touching her hair. They had a problem with her hair being windswept, calling it messy most times. But now that Megan's left, we see Kate wearing outfits that are very Megan inspired and not just inspired like straight up copying Megan's look and Sussex stands and Sussex squatties aren't the only people who have taken note the English press on occasion calls it out months before I saw an article about it and as quickly as it was published it disappeared and recently there are articles published about it again and it's the invisible contract really comes into play here because as quickly as it is published, it is either removed or heavily edited to ensure um, palace friendly talking points as opposed to just blatantly calling a thing a thing. And I'm not the only one who's noticed. A lot of people are like, well, hey, there's an article that's calling Kate out for what she's doing. You know, you got to screenshot it, got to archive it because, you know, more often than not or soon enough, it's going to be edited or it's going to be deleted. And the articles isn't just about them calling out Kate for copying Megan. We've seen them do this a lot over the years, especially when it comes to articles that are written about uh, William's alleged affair or even articles that were written about uh, the whole peg situation. If you know, you know. So that again ties into what Harry talked about in the Oprah interview, the invisible contract. And remember, a lot of these royal reporters were like, invisible contract, what is he talking about? He's lying. That's a lie, there's no invisible contract. We don't know what you're talking about. If you, if you as a family member are willing to wine, dine, and give full access to these reporters, uh, then you will get better press. Editors from various newspapers have been invited in to meet him. Here's a delicate balance. On the one hand, editors are being wooed, relationships are being forged. Now, this week, uh, Kate went to visit the Ukrainian center, rocking a Megan style once again. And sure enough, as soon as that article came out, within hours, the article was taken out and heavily edited to make sure that it's not saying that Kate is channeling Megan's style, you know, sanitized, make it Kate friendly, AKA palace friendly. And also the Harry and Meghan fans and the British press isn't the only people who have noticed that. I saw an article from uh, one of the Spanish media that was talking about that exact situation and providing examples of uh, Kate straight up wearing what Meghan wears. <laughs> and I'm going to try to see if I can find the receipt um, and add it in here. 
But the thing is, I don't, I don't blame Kate for trying to capture certain essences of Megan's style, but that's not what she's doing. She's straight up copying it and straight up copying the style of a woman that you dislike of a woman you've had a hand in making her experience in the UK almost unbearable. And this started long before Meghan and Harry even got married. Let's not forget, Kate made Meghan cry. And since that happened, there has been a million and one different versions of the story when Meghan made it known that that story was a lie and that the opposite happened. And not only did she say that the opposite happened, she said that Kate apologized, she sent her flowers and a note. A note that I'm sure Megan still has in her possession. And the media, of course Kate and William aren't going to address this directly, but what they do is not never complain, never explain. They complain through lawyers, um, by issuing injunctions against the press, especially if they're talking about things like William's alleged affair, or they'll use third parties to moan and groan and present their talking points. Look, even with the latest thing about the, uh, the crown, the palace sent their little flying monkeys, the royal r reporters, to moan and groan about the unfairness of the crown making Charles look bad right? They sent Trudy Dench, who is a friend of Camilla, to moan and groan about it as well. So they do complain and they do explain. They don't do it directly. They just have other people do it for them. So when Megan made it known that Kate had made her cry, they tried to send all of these people to give a million and one different versions of the story. But the thing is, if at any point Megan did make Kate cry, why would Kate send Megan an apology, a note, and flowers? You know, and that's a tangible note right there. The note is tangible. So that's why you'll see Kate and William and them will never directly address this because they know there's the note here. Common sense dictates if someone makes you cry, you're not gonna send them a note and flowers and an apology. And instead of just saying, well, yeah, you know, she was having a, a bad day and whatnot. No, they had friends of William and Kate leak this ridiculous story in order to have Megan face the wrath of the royalists. Because remember at that time, things were going really well for Megan, Megan and Harry. They were doing the tours and they were being well received it was incredible. You're seeing crowds gathering to just get a peek at Harry and Meghan. They were receiving rock star reception that you really don't see that's given to a lot of other members in that family. And if it's one thing that we've seen throughout history, when it comes to the British royal family, it's imperative that you never ever outshine the air. Never ever do that. And that is exactly what Meghan and Harry was doing. And they couldn't have it. So that story was flipped and put out there. And that opened the floodgates for Meghan to be unmercifully attacked. So that was before the wedding, right? She made Meghan cry. And God knows, like what sort of cruel, mean thing could you possibly say to a grown woman to make her cry? to be a fly on that wall because I'd really like to know because that's like next level meanness and she knows that Megan was going through it with her dad and she knows the pressures of um, putting together a royal wedding so that right there major side eye so you make Megan cry then you show up to Megan's wedding in an outfit that is damn near white and some will say well it wasn't exactly white you know just photograph that way for women in the public eye, specifically Kate and even Megan, but most women in the public eye, they use their fashion to tell stories, to convey messages. She isn't known for being particularly charismatic. She isn't known for being um, very loquacious. And in, I suppose in listening to everybody, that's I suppose that's why this was for me really important. That was you know to have this 
place where we can all come together, whether it's parents or um, neuroscientists or um, academics, all those well. Tate is known for style, for fashion, very traditional, it emulates her beloved late mother-in-law, it emulates the queen, very traditional. Kate has a slew of stylists and makeup artists and hair folk, and I'm sure shoppers, to do her bidding. So you're telling me that not even Kate nor one of these people in her style team could have said, well, you know, this color is going to photograph as white, so perhaps you shouldn't wear this. Nobody? I mean, even Oprah said that she changed her outfit because they realized that even though it was pastel and it wasn't white, but it would photograph that way and it would be incredibly tacky to go to someone's wedding wearing something that would be seen as white. But Kate decided to do the her do. And it very much reminds me of when Camilla showed up to Charles and Diana's wedding in white. So there's that. So you make her cry, you show up to her wedding wearing almost white, and note that of all the other weddings that Kate has attended, royal weddings included, she has never ever worn articles of clothing that would photograph white in anybody else's wedding but Meghan. That's some passive aggressive ish right there. So she does that. Then when Meghan's popularity is soaring, dispatch the flying monkeys to spin the narrative that Meghan is aggressive villain who is attacking the poor, poor, sweet, innocent Kate. Meghan is attacked mercilessly in the press to the point where she gets highly depressed. And even as a spectator, reading the articles and the posts and the tweets, as a spectator, it was heavy on my heart. It was, sometimes it would be hard to read the ish that they were writing about Megan on a daily basis. So I cannot begin to imagine what it felt like for her. You've left your home, your life, for this man that you love. You're in a new country. You're taking on new tasks. Your every move is dissected to no end. And now you have an army of people, not just the press, but social media royalists. And then you have these aides and courtiers and these people who are supposed to be your new family members. It's a barrage of attacks from every single front, right? Attacks that got even worse when she got pregnant because now they're gonna have her exotic, aka black as hell, DNA mucking up the Windsor White bloodline, and they just couldn't have that. So Megan is so depressed that she feels like her life is not worth living anymore, and they know that. And for those of you who say, well, maybe Kate didn't know that. How, Sway? How? They knew everything. These aides and courtiers were even leaking the things that Meghan were eating. Everybody knew what she was going through. Even Valentine Lowe, one of the biggest Sussex-hating royal reporters, said that they knew that Meghan was having a hard time, that she was crying behind those palace walls. So we'll see her out and about with a smile. But they knew behind the smile, behind the scenes, behind those palace walls that she was having a hard go. Of course she would. Anyone would if they're under attack from every single front. It looked like to me, the only friendly face in that entire institution was Harry. And Kate didn't say anything. And for those of you who will say, well, you know, it's not really Kate's responsibility to say anything. If your people, your staff and your friends are out here putting out lies that makes you seem good and somebody seems bad and that person is going through it because of those lies or the lies that are told on your behalf amplifies the hatred that that person gets. Any decent human being would say, well, you know what? How about we put out a statement and say, well, you know, she didn't make me cry. And they didn't even need to go into detail to say, well, you know, Kate was having a bad day and she said something and she made, they didn't even need to say that. Just say, hey, now, now, that was a lie and keep it moving. 
But they didn't do that. They stayed silent. And one of the people within that family who has benefited the most from the attacks that Megan has gotten is Kate. Before Megan came on the scene, Kate was ripped to shreds. And from the beginning, I mean, long before, Wadey Katie, they did show pictures of her coming out of clubs drunk in the back of cabs. I mean, I, I, there's even photos of her hoo-ha, like all out, exposed for all to see. Now, I'm not gonna put that on YouTube because I, <laughs> I don't wanna get in trouble. But there are lots of articles about them um, calling her and her sister Pippa the Wisteria sisters saying like really, really nasty things about them, saying that they're unworthy, um, that Kate was unworthy of William because she's not aristocratic enough, she's not this enough, she's not that enough. So Kate has been through it. And even like right before Megan came on the scene, remember the media had no problem with calling Kate and William lazy. Duchess Doolittle, that's Kate. Work shy William, that's Prince William. And that wasn't just tabloid fodder. This wasn't just hateful rhetoric. It was true. If you look at the facts, their engagement numbers were sadly lacking. And even to this day, now that they're the Prince and Princess of Wales, they're still lazy as hell. They barely do anything. And when they do, it's sort of like just more sloppy-ish. They come out, smile, take some photos, give a, a dry, boring, uninspiring speech, and then they go back home. And a lot of the times they're not even doing it together anymore. I saw on, uh, on Twitter, some people were like, well, it's, it's giving me <laughs> Charles and, and Diana um, vibes, you know, right before the war of the Waleses began, when things were really sort of uh, breaking down. And also, people will say, well, you know, Kate doesn't explain and she doesn't complain, but that's BS. We've already established that they do complain and explain via third parties. But Kensington Palace, and for those of you who don't know, William and Kate are the principals of Kensington Palace. They're the boss, right? The boss and the boss woman. They complained and had unsavory articles or elements of an article, especially in the Kate the Great uh, article um, from, I believe it was the Tatler. And they had said some not so nice things about Kate. Um, and they even said something about her getting Botox, which I'm just like, who cares? You know, women in the media, there are always gonna be people who talk smack about their physical appearances. I get how that can be annoying, but at the end of the day, like, they've said so many different things and nastier things about other people. Someone saying that you have Botox really shouldn't be that big of a deal, right? But they made sure that that part of the article was removed. They made sure to take out other elements of the article, but you know what they didn't take out? The lie that Megan made Kate cry. Kate didn't have a problem with that. Kate and her people didn't have a problem with that. So there's been a pattern clearly showing that between the two women, Kate has always been the one who has been the aggressor. So that makes it far more perplexing, off-putting, and shady, sinister, just like major side eye. Here's this woman that you don't like. And even when you look at the videos of interactions between Kate and, and Megan. Megan's always the one that kind of looks like she's a little, she just doesn't want to get involved in that. She just looks so uncomfortable when she's around William and Kate. Kate has always been the one that has been hella rude, like mean girl to the extreme. Let's not forget her being rude as hell in the Commonwealth service to the point where even American media, different medias globally were like, uh, girl, what the hell? <laughs> she was rude. Ford Fiesta, Sophie, Mean Girl Wessex was rude too. But has there been any instances where we've ever seen Megan being rude to Kate? No, not at all. It's always Kate. Look at them doing the walkabout um, before Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Kate, she can't even bear to be civil. You can tell how much she loathes Megan. Yet you're out here cosplaying that woman? Even trying to mimic some of her mannerisms? Now, I'm not a royalist and I never really cared about that family and what they do. 
like I didn't even look at William and Kate's wedding I didn't pay attention when they had kids and as much as I liked Harry I wasn't even invested in his life I wasn't paying attention to his love life whatever information that I got about them was what you see on the the headlines in the US media and I would see Harry you know doing his thing and be like oh you know he seems cool reminded me of his mother just sort of doing his thing very sociable but I was never been invested in them. There are times where I would see Kate and be like, oh, you know, she looks cute. Now I can't even do that. Because when you dig and you just look at how dirty they've been to Meghan, I can't even enjoy the pomp and pageantry of the British royal family. I can't enjoy a fashion moment from Kate. It just, it irritates me to no end. And I'm glad that people are, are seeing it and are calling it out. Like that's some next level, mean girl, passive aggressive behavior. I see a lot of people on social media saying it's it's giving them single white female energy. And it really, really does. Why are you out here trying to copy someone that you don't like? Someone that you have gone out of your way to be rude to, to be disrespectful to. And now she's the, the patron of um, mental health for maternity for pregnant women and I'm just like you you didn't care when this woman was getting attacked when she was pregnant none of you people cared it's incredibly disingenuous and even now that Megan left and she's back in the US and her and Harry are just doing their thing they're trying to create this new era of Kate um, that in many ways, like I said, is very Megan inspired from the styles, the constant wearing of pantsuits, her trying to convene round tables and, and give more public speeches. Now you can dress like Megan, but she just doesn't have the commanding presence and her public speaking is mediocre. Sometimes, uh, I mean, she mumbles, okay? She's, she's not the best public speaker. But the odd thing about it, like I said, is you hate Megan, but you're trying to be like her, but you're not. This past week, there was a panel discussion, um, as there always is on talk TV, <laughs> that dives deeper into each and every episode of Megan's podcast. <laughs> so yeah, just like us Sussex stands, they pay attention to everything Megan does. <laughs> Whenever Kate or William or anybody else goes on podcast, you don't see them dissecting it the way that they do um, when they focus on every single episode that Megan does. That's to tell you, <laughs> they're no longer senior working royals, but people still pay attention to everything that they do. The haters as much, if not even more than the fans. And one of the commenters on the panel... One of the reasons Catherine is so popular amongst certain demographics, and I'm going to say older people and yeah. men, is because she says absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. She's a good little girl who keeps quiet and doesn't tell, doesn't complain, mm. doesn't, doesn't yeah. do anything, doesn't rock the boat, and is a very traditional, old-fashioned, mute woman. Spoke about Kate being liked by a certain demographic, namely older folks and men. And they like her because she doesn't rock the boat. She's very quiet, unassuming, unimposing, and mute. She even said something about her being a nice little girl, which I find so odd. The way that this woman is infantilized by the, that echo system of royal fandom. Like she's a 40 something year old mother of three. She's not a girl. Okay. <laughs> what is going on here? But, and of course, you know, Kate fans were up in arms. How dare you say that she is mute? She is not. But she is. And you don't have to dig very deep to find countless articles calling Kate lazy, calling her quiet, calling her silent. Um, and not just in the UK media, in the US and other media sources as well. Kate's entire adulthood and royal career has been do not upstage William. You smile sweetly, you support him, much like Camilla. You know, you, they don't outshine Charles and William. They are the ever unassuming, unimposing 
spouse, which is very different to Harry and Meghan's dynamic. You'll see Meghan sweetly staring up at Harry whenever he's giving his speeches or doing whatever. You can tell that woman is smitten. But when Meghan steps up to the plate and she's giving her speeches and she's giving it her all and she's doing quite well, you see Harry on the sidelines looking up at his wife with just as much admiration, pride, and smittenness, if that's even a word, as Meghan does when she looks at him. She is not an unassuming, silent woman. Not that I think that that is what Harry wanted to begin with. If he wanted that, he would have his pick of any of those women. And he didn't. He knew exactly what he was getting in Meghan. And that bothers so many in the royal establishment. Because she's not like Kate and Camilla and the rest. She really isn't. So now that she's not there, because they've essentially run her out of the country, run her out of the institution, it's even more sickening to see them trying to mold Kate into a version of Meghan when her entire royal career is just about sitting, being meek, being mild, make sure you have pretty hair, <laughs> and you know, your fashion is very royal, traditionalist inspired. Don't make any big moves. Do not shine the air. There is something that's just so dysfunctional about that entire Kate Megan dynamic. Kate never liked Megan. She never even gave her a shot. And let's not forget, even back to the wedding, come up in there wearing something that you know is going to photograph as white. And did you see her facial expressions throughout the wedding? She was rude as hell. Her, Camilla, um, uh, Zara, his cousin, and her husband, just straight up trash behavior. But now you're out here trying to copy her. Like I said, you can copy the style, but she can never be a Megan. She just can't. So I don't know why she doesn't just give it up, stop. 